The other week, one of my kids turned 12. Yes, 12. If you remember one of the early episodes, What Do You Say to a 10 year old? My, how far we've come. The world being his oyster, he wanted to spend the day at an amusement park close by. While I thought my days of hanging upside down and spinning in circles until my face turned green were way behind me, it seems they have returned on the account of my son's insistence that I ride every single one of the roller coasters with him. Twelve years ago, heck, two years ago, I would have found this charming, but these days it just makes my palms sweat. That said, I love spending time with my kids and watching them have fun. So losing best of three in rock, paper, scissors to my wife wasn't that bad. I gritted my teeth and busted out my shiniest dad sneakers and braced myself for a day of an adventure. (sighs) We started off slow and with some of the kitty rides and then we worked our way up into the big leagues. And one ride fairly early on in the quote-unquote big leagues, well, it got me, I must confess. Straight out of the chute, I knew this one was going to be trouble. Just pretend it isn't real, I said to myself. This is all make-believe. Just close your eyes and wish it away. I'm not going to lie. It actually helped. I mentally detached myself from the roller coaster. I got through it. Whoa, I said, this is great. At least it felt like it at the time. On a few more rides in the day, I would slip into this checked out state. But then something interesting happened. I noticed I wasn't checking out. I was missing out. The time with my son on his birthday, it began to fade away. And he was right there next to me. It's like my brain was trying to protect me from the day by numbing me out. But in doing so, I was missing out on the very thing I was trying to protect myself from. The intensity of the roller coasters, the the laughter, the screaming, and the energy of my son. It was all too much for my brain to handle at once, and so it did what it thought was best. It checked out. But in checking out... I noticed I was missing out on some of the best moments of the day. Moments that I will never get back. Moments that I never wanted to forget. Derealization, also known as depersonalization. And I've even read dehumanization. It's a condition where someone feels disconnected from the world around them intentionally or maybe subconsciously but it's real and surprisingly so the whole idea of life being a simulation more people feel this way than you can imagine one study stated 50 percent of all adults in the united states will suffer from at least one or two depersonalization attacks over the course of their lifetime 50 percent Now, many of you know, a lot of my episodes come from listener request, thank you by the way, and TikTok. And this is actually something that I found on TikTok. Yes, I love TikTok. The audience is, they're just honest and they're transparent. And if they're trying to work through something, they share it with the entire world. The audience on TikTok, I mean, they're brave because they're not afraid to show their vulnerability. It's inspiring, actually, at least to me it is to see people so open about their struggles. It makes me feel less alone in my own journey. So thank you, TikTok audience. You are an inspiration. But I came across this recently on TikTok. Derealization. Depersonalization. And while it may feel like a, an easy coping tool, it's a slippery slope. And one that doesn't seem to bottom out anywhere or anytime soon. Now, with those going through depersonalization, sometimes life just doesn't seem real. It's like your body's here. You know that logically, and you know that you're here on this earth listening to this podcast, but it doesn't feel like you are. It's almost like an out-of-body experience, but not really in a fun way. It's almost like there's a fog or a glass wall between you and the world around you. Whatever you 
do, you can't seem to break the glass. And the other people around you are like ghosts. And it feels like no matter how much you scream, you can't get through to them. Or maybe, just maybe you're the ghost. You feel numb, like you're in a dream or in a movie and you're watching yourself go about your day, but it's almost like you're an autopilot. You're not even in your own skin. And if you've ever experienced this, you know that it's terrifying. But sometimes, sometimes people start to disassociate in this way because for them, the real world is even more terrifying. And by that, I mean a world that's more than just a few hours of riding roller coasters. It's a form of escape from trauma, from all the bad, all the horrible parts of life. And you might have learned it as a kid, you know, float outside of your body for a little while and you don't have to face the immense pain of what's happening to you. And for other people, this feeling comes after a panic or anxiety attack. You're so panicked, you're so frightened that your body just starts to disconnect, to, to zone out. It's just too much to be present for. Life is hard. And when life is too hard, we sometimes go away. And being away becomes our natural state. And there's no one thing that leads to derealization. It can happen for different reasons, but no matter the reason of what has you here, I want you to realize you are not alone. And I know that's very cliche, but listen to this. 200,000 people in the United States suffer from some level of depersonalization disorder on any given day. 200,000 people just in the United States alone. Now, you don't have to go on living like this. As scary as derealization is, facing reality could feel scarier to you right now. I get that. Life is hard. It's scary. I understand. And you might feel ambivalent about it. On one hand, it's terrible to not feel like anything is real to be so detached. And on the other hand, it's almost like it protects you. Many of you know of my love for the late Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh. So I want to share a quote that he says, and I hope you listen in. Life is available only in the present moment. I'm going to say that again. Life is available only in the present moment. In other words, life is meant to be lived. And we can't live life if we're not here. So is it scary? <laughs> yes, gracious, it is. And I'm going to be very transparent with you. From day one, I said I would always be honest in this podcast. This is actually something I'm working through personally as well. The pandemic the social climate, losing my dad, all of these things culminating layer upon layer. But if we go back to that other mantra that I've said many times before, it isn't about you. It isn't about me. It's about us. And right now, what we need to do is be there for each other collectively. To listen to each other, to hold each other up, because that's what family does. That's what friends do. That's what community does. So if you're feeling lost or like you're struggling to keep your head above the water, I urge you to reach out. Talk to someone. We're all in this boat together, bobbing the emotional waves of this ocean called life. Many hands light the weight. Together, we'll get through this. And we can. We can do it together. But for right now, I want you to take my hand. We're going to return to Earth. We're going to get both feet on the ground. And we're going to become real. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's comment down in three, two, one. Now, I often lead you in a guided visualization. We're walking in a peaceful garden, that kind of thing. But as much as I love a visualization, and as much as they're helpful to many people, 
I don't think it's the right thing for you if you're facing derealization or disassociation because I want you back here with me. Not in some imaginary garden, not running around in your head, but right here in the physical world, the real world. So today we're going to practice something called grounding. Grounding is a way to, and this is a little literal, get back onto the ground, to plant yourself here in the present moment, both feet on the ground, solid, present, real. You aren't a ghost. You're not. As much as it may seem fun, especially with Halloween coming up, you are real and you're here. We're here together. So let's do this together. This is what's called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 activity. And no, it's not from Sesame Street. You may have heard of it. And if you have, please just humor me. and Let's do this together. So for this grounding exercise... I don't want you to close your eyes. I want you to use your eyes. So, if you would, open them and see the world around you. Are you ready? Okay. To get started, we're going to take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Oh, that feels so good. Now, Again, five, four, three, two, one. And each number represents a sense. First, find five things that you can see around you without getting up. Maybe it's your cat. Maybe it's a spot on your ceiling. Whatever it is, look at it. Name it. And name what color it is out loud. Right now, I see... Well, for me, I see a microphone, and it's silver. I see the glass of water next to me right now. I see the iPad that I have in front of me that I'm using. There are things around you. Name five things. Next, find four things that you can feel, that you can reach out and pick them up. Wherever your hand just grabs, just brush against it. How does this thing feel in your hand? What's the, what's the weight? Is it smooth? Is it bumpy? This is the world, the real world. All of these things are part of the real world, just like you. Bonus points if you find things with really interesting textures or temperatures, like something that's really cold or something that's extra smooth or something extra fluffy, like a derby. Focus on how all of these things feel. Next, you're going to use your sense of hearing. What are three sounds you can hear? One, obviously, is the sound of my voice and the music in the background. Feel free to turn the volume up really loud or just off completely if that feels good to you. I'm right here with you and talking to you. You can hear my voice. I am a real person. But what else can you hear? Maybe you can hear your dog quietly snoring on the bed next to you. Or maybe some construction that's going on outside. Whatever it is, notice it. Embrace it. Let the sounds bring you back here. Next, we're going to use our sense of smell. Find two things with a strong scent. For this part, feel free to walk around and sniff random things in your room. No one's watching you. You're totally by yourself. It could be your soap. It could be your leftovers from lunch. It could be the incense you're burning. It doesn't have to matter what it is. It doesn't even really matter if you like the smell or not. But breathe it all in. How does the smell make your nose feel? What does the smell remind you of? How does your body react in real time when you smell it? Lastly, taste. Hmm, this one's my favorite. Tasting something delicious is one of the joys of life. So if you have a tasty treat lying around, 
put it in your mouth. Savor the taste, the explosion of flavors. Right now, at this very moment, you are connecting with life through delicious food. And what is better than that? My wife is a baker, so I relish this one completely. If you don't have a tasty treat, it's okay too. Any strong taste will do, like maybe swishing your mouthwash around or popping in a piece of gum. But, but right now, connecting with life through something that you can taste. So again, five, four, three, two, one. Five things you can see, four things you can feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and then my favorite, one thing you can taste. One last thing, if I may. Usually when I'm writing or editing an episode, I, I take a number of breaks and come back to it with fresh eyes. Sometimes I think something that I'm writing is, is great. And when I come back, I'm like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> but my point being, I took a break during this episode, and it was about the same time when I do my daily yoga. Don't worry, I'm not going to get all yogi on you. But the past few months, I've been struggling at best to learn a position in yoga called the crow's pose. And it's basically this awkward position where your hands are planted on the floor, your knees are pressed into the back of your arms, into your triceps, and you shift your weight forward, balancing on just your two hands. I know it's bizarre, and it's as difficult as it sounds, at least for me. But all to say, today, I held the pose for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I was literally so in shock that I lost my concentration and I fell flat on my face. 10 seconds. I was so excited. It's the longest I have ever held this pose. And I was going to post about it on social media, but I thought that was a bit much. But here's my point. I have struggled with this for months. For, for months. And today finally made a breakthrough. I have honestly been smiling ever since. No, I'm not trying to trivialize struggles with comparing them to a yoga pose, but hear me out for a second. I did it. I did it, and it felt amazing. I worked through something that was really difficult, and while I'm still nowhere near perfect at it, there's wind in my sails. I've had that moment of, ugh, oh, this was difficult, but now I see the benefit of working through it. It's easy to passively say, you know, just work through whatever you're going through. You'll be fine. But with some help, with some friends, with some patience and a little inspiration, there will come a time when you're on the other side of what you're going through, of what you're trying to disassociate yourself from. There will come a time when you can take an experience that you've wanted to ignore and press through, as uncomfortable as it may be. Life is available only in the present moment. I'm going to say that again one last time. Life is available only in the present moment. Are roller coasters scary? Yes. <laughs> is life scary? Yes. And our scars, yes, they are painful, of course, but life is full of scariness and pain. But it's also full of beauty and joy and laughing and screaming 12 year olds at the top of a roller coaster. <laughs> You've been given this life for a reason. And there's something special about you. There's something special about you what the world needs. This life you've been given has a purpose, and as easy as it may feel at the time, don't let your fears blur your living. Did you hear that? Don't let your fears blur your living. Your scars, embrace them. Use them as a reminder that you are strong, that you are resilient, that you made it through without having to detach from the real life. 
Life is an amazing gift. Yes, it's full of ups, it's full of downs, but it's only available in the present moment. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or a diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, But my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this in future podcasts and aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.